Some of you are stuck because in business, something backfired and you still, you've stayed there for years. When I was employed by so-and-so, he did that to me. If he hadn't done that, this 13 years later, I would have been this far. I would have already achieved this. Now I'm behind. My schoolmates have already gone ahead of me. Those I was with in Form 4 have already finished. They even have this. Get over. God wants somebody here to get over that quick. Because what he wants to bath in you, the David that came later was much better than Saul. What God is bringing for you is going to be better. But you must put a timer to crying. You cannot continue crying. Ruth chapter 3 verse 1 to 4. Ruth chapter 3 verse 1 to 4. One day her mother-in-law, Naomi, said to Ruth, My dear daughter, isn't it about time I arranged a good home for you so that you can have a happy life? Isn't it about time I arranged a good home for you so that you can enter rest? That's what King James says. So marriage is supposed to be a form of rest. Ah, yeah. God help you. God help you if you're in marriage and they, you're not resting. May, may, may God help you today. May God just help, help you. And isn't Boaz our close relative, the one with whom, whose young women you've been working? Maybe it's time to make our move. Tonight is the night of Boaz's barley harvest at the threshing floor. Now look at the practicalities. Alikuwa na mwambia, umelia sana, you've been a widow. Your husband died, your brother-in-law died, your father-in-law died. Okay. Let's admit, people have died. You've been left. Okay? But then, one and, and, and Ruth was very nice, very submissive, helping her mother-in-law and all that. But a time came. And the time has come for someone today. Yeah. Look at the instructions. Number one, take a bath. End of woge. <laughs> Young lady who's been crying over a man. Uh, let me tell you. Go end of woge. <laughs> so that we can breathe near you. You know, we need to breathe. There is no AC here. Take a bath. Eh? Put on some perfume. Ah. Eh? We all sweat. You'll be putting perfume somewhere there. Put on some perfume. Because you had been smelling of death. You can hang around death until you smell of death. And her mother-in-law was telling her, God wants to bath something new, but you're going to stop smelling like that. Smelling of death. Put on some perfume. Perfume means praise. Put on some praise. Praise is like perfume. Put on some praise. Many revivals in history have not lasted because they were bathed hand fast. Whenever there's been revival, in many revivals in history, they didn't last because human skill, human control, human experience, human power. When man began to take the glory for what God was doing, God backed off. And why we've lost so many revivals, because I've been privileged to experience revivals, to be in the midst of revivals in the late 80s. I saw revivals in the 90s uh, as a teenager. There, there, there are many things I, I saw, the move of God in those early years. And, and, and some, of, some people who should teach us about revival is like uh, our visiting bishop here. And we've seen revivals. And, and Reverend, Reverend Julian has been asking, he's concerned at how do you sustain a revival? And I think there's an answer there. It has to be Christ first. As long as Christ is first, if we bath or initiate revival, Christ first, it will last. If we bath anything with your hand first, with your connections, with your power first, with what you know as a human being, it won't last. Because God wants to get all the glory. And so this has to be bathed God's way. So it's not just a matter... We are not just talking about just bathing things, bathing things, bathing businesses, bathing marriages, bathing ministries, bathing whatever it is God has put in your heart. It has to be done right. What is right? Right is God's will done God's way. God's will must be done God's way. That boy did not come out right. That's why he was overtaken by the one who came out right. In this hour, the people who set their minds to do things right, will overtake the ones who have not done it right. You will begin to see it. And that's why we are sharing this word with you because the, the Lord is stirring and positioning many of you in places in the marketplace. Like, like uh, our sisters who, who stood up here. God will position you in places where people are not even born again and put you there in the marketplace. Internationally, nationally, locally, county government, there's a lot of opportunities in county government that where God wants to send some of us to go and be positioned there. But if you're going to overcome and increase the kingdom of God there, you're going to have to come out right and do it right. And it has to be Christ first. 
It has to be done right. If you try to do it in your own might, the people in the world know those games. They know how to bribe to get their way. They know how to be corrupt to get their way. They know what fraud is. They can kill. They can fake something and you end up in court, something you didn't do, but because they have more money than you and more connections to put you out. So the people of the world know this game. It's called a dog-eat-dog -dog society. If, if the people here, especially this is a word especially for people in business, if you're going to break through like Perez, break forth into the business and have discoveries there, enter new levels uh, and do exploits for God, you must do it right. God's will must be done God's way. Let's go to Mika 2.13. Mika 2.13. Mika 2.13. The breaker, the Messiah, will go before them. They will break through, pass in through the gate, and go out through it, and their king will pass on before them, the Lord at their head. If you're going to break through in the marketplace and in these last days, if the church is going to rise and become the most powerful institution in the world, we are going to let the breaker who lives in us. Do you know Jesus is also called the breaker? So you have no reason to be limited and contained in whatever situation you're going through because the one who is able to help you break through whatever it is lives in you. He lives in you. And it's not an issue of money. So long as the breaker lives in you, the Messiah lives in you, you can break through anything that, that God has for you. And uh, last word to... Uh, I, I believe this is a, a, a good message for Africa, especially those of us who are African, born again. People have laughed at Africa, but Africa is rising. Go to the slide of Africa. Africa is rising. Africa is rising and, and, and Africa is you. You and I are the people in Africa. And God is giving us revelation, knowledge, and some of these things you're hearing this morning from the pulpit. God is equipping you because of where he's taking you in the nations and the many, many places and platforms he's taking you so that you can break through and godliness can begin to invade nations and invade homes and invade uh, many, many places. And... and I believe this is a word God wants you to run with. In your time of prayer, look through Genesis 39, Genesis 39, verse what? That Genesis 38, verse 29. That's where that scripture is from. People are going to ask you, how did you break forth? There are things God is giving you that people will ask you, how? How did you break forth? Some of you people are going to tell you what are breaking forth you have made for yourself. Some of you God is going to, people are going to tell you, so this is how you have broken out. And you notice it shocked the midwives. Your breakthrough will shock your mentors. The people helping you to, to break through. God's word translation. Is this how you burst into the world? NLT. What? The midwife exclaimed. How did you break out fast? And Young's literal translation, what? You have broken forth. This is a word you will hear. Some of you sitting here, you will hear people asking you how. Yeah. What? You mean? That is going to happen to you. I know you are all so messed up today, but God does not give you a word when things are okay. He has brought you a prophetic word this morning to tell you people are going to tell you that. Take a photo of that, you will remember the day. When people will ask you, how did you open that school? How did you go international? How? How did you break through? You don't have education. You're not intelligent. You, you, you don't have, you don't look the part. How? People are going to ask you those questions. But we have to do it right. God's will must be done God's way. So listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit this week. Take down, note down the things God tells you. Pay attention to the things God tells you. Don't postpone them. Don't procrastinate what God tells you. Do what God has called you to do.